in the brewing process, once you've, once you've either added your malt extract or you've done an all grain mash and run off into the kettle, when that kettle's full and ready to go, there's, um, there's a bunch of different hopping options you can go with and it all depends on how that beer, you want to you wanna balance that, that bitterness curve on it. So you can put your hops in the mash, you can mash hop. You can put them in the kettle and you can run off onto them and they're in soak and just soaking and steeping until you run off to a full kettle volume and then start to come up to your boil. Or once you're boiling and you're at a boil, you can throw your hops in. And I guess lastly, you can do a full boil and throw everything at the end and just do a late, late kettle hop. So um, hops are utilized in the boil. The longer you boil, the more bitterness is extracted, the less flavor and the less aromatics you get. Those, those are the, um, the resins that, that volatize off the quickest, the aromatics, then the flavor. The bitterness just stays. It's, um, that gets um, boiled into the beer. So we generally do the first wort hops. So we'll have hops in the kettle. We'll run our, our lauder off onto it and get the kettle up. Um, once it's up and boiling, you'll notice the hot break. And I always refer to that as the, the Kraft macaroni and cheese effect. You're boiling, you put your, mac, you put your macaroni noodles in there and all of a sudden you foam over and then it goes away. And essentially that's your, um, I don't know about the mac and cheese, but that's what I reference it as. But um, the, the proteins from your malt that are in your, um, your extract at this point that you bring up to a boil, they reach a point where they, they, they start um, to precipitate out and become actual little gummy protein flakes in the, uh, in the beer. And those bubble up and then they, they, they settle back down and they get bigger as the boils rolling and turning they hit and they collide and they're they're sticky so they fuse to each other and they get heavy enough where they actually stay down in the boil and then at the end of the boil when you kill the flame you stir it up and it's called the whirlpool and that stuff will actually all go together in, in a nice big compact cone and um, those that hot break actually helps like keep your, uh, your hops and other uh, stuff that's uh, precipitated out in the, in the boil into a nice cone. So when you run off, you got clear beer running off on the side port and the center's got your, uh, your goo essentially. <laughs> and then um, chilling the beer, that's critical too because you've got this nice sugary broth that everything wants to eat. Anything in the air, you name it, it, it wants in there, good or bad. So you want to um, you want to um, cool it as quick as possible and what you'll see is um, another precipitation happen and that's your cold break and that's just more stuff from going from the hot to the cool temperature that will precipitate out because it's no longer soluble. And it's really neat like if you use a glass carboy, not so much in the stainless here in these tanks you can't see in, but in a glass carboy when you're, when you're doing your brew and you cool it, you can actually see the cold break like form and start to sink and it looks like when you get like pictures from the Hubble like those those like nebulas and it's just so cool. It looks like stuff from uh, the Hubble telescope kind of. So malt extract, essentially you've got your, um, you can brew with malt extract, you can brew with actual barley as the raw ingredient. Um, you take the barley, you crush it in the mill, you add the water at whatever temperature you want your enzymatic reaction to be at. That converts it to, to fermentable sugar. You then run it off and you've got diluted malt extract.